Okay, let's graph some exponential functions. Yeah. So here we go. Um, flip over to this page in your in your notes, and I'll take you through the wild journey of how we can graph these fellows, and then you'll have a nice uh, uh, video that you can refer to for this method. My first step when I look at this one, f of x is I get a pen that works and I, I box the function and I say, okay, what am I looking at here? Well, I have a base number three. So that's like B is equal to three and it's being raised to an X that's being transformed. So I'm like, all right, well, that's cool. Um, then my base function, my parent function is three to the X. So what I'll do is I'll create a table of values with X and y values here, instead of writing y values, I'll just write three to the x, because that's equals y, y equals three to the x is my parent function. And then I choose some convenient points for x. I might change these in different situations, but for this situation, these values are great. I might start at zero when filling in my function. And so I have three to the zero is equal to one. Three to the one is equal to three. Three to the two is equal to nine. And then three to the negative one, oh, that's one over three to the one. That's just one third, because that's how I roll. And three to the negative two is one ninth. It's one over three squared. So now we have a nice table of values for our parent function, and we're ready to transform it. I look in here, and I see that this function is going to shift five units to the right because D is positive five. So I'm going to add five to all X values. So let's do that. Negative two plus five is, neg is positive three. <laughs> negative one plus five is positive four. Ne zero plus five is five. One plus five is six. And two plus five is seven. See how I did that in my head without any rough work? Yeah, you remember this day, everyone. This is the day I got through one half of a table of values without making a mistake. All right, and then I add eight to all these things. So eight plus a ninth is eight and one ninth. Oh. Isn't that neat how you can use fractions to do this addition pretty easily? One third plus eight is eight and a third. One plus eight is nine. Three plus eight is 11. And nine plus eight is 17. What? Nine plus eight is seventeen. Oh, wait, if I'm you if you run out of fingers, take your shoes off. But wait, why are you doing one to the nine plus eight? Oh, because uh, we have a C transformation here of plus eight. Oh, right. So we use that to add it on to all of our Y values. So I take this column of Y values here and just apply that transformation to get my new column. This is the table of values for the uh, transformed function. So go ahead and plot them on your graph paper. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Whee! So I have plus three, eight, and a ninth. So here is three, eight, and a ninth. It's right there, just barely over eight. And then four, eight, and a third, a little bit more above eight. That's uh, Huh? Five nine, the point five nine Ben Mundell is over here at the point five nine, and um, the six eleven is also six eleven. We're into the world of integer points now. What a delight! And uh, seven seventeen. Huh? No, I'm just graphing this table, guys. We're going off the, yeah, that one. Really yeah, plus three. I just got it's there. Three. I was looking at the original x. Yeah, but don't do the original X because that was the parent function. The parent function has been transformed. Yeah. And uh, I'm only this sarcastic with you because I, uh, I know you can take it. Okay, here we go. So now we just join those with a nice curve like this. I might have missed one a little bit, but I'm still pretty satisfied. Oh, no, I didn't have any more values going that way. What should I do? How will I complete my graph? Well, plot the asymptote. The asymptote is the line y equals 8, because I know that the asymptote is just the c value of this transform function. So I can put in a little dotty line there that I can really try hard not to cross as I draw the rest of this curve. 
I should be closer to that asymptote, but whatever. There you go. And that would be a graph of this function. Let's take a look at the function again. And notice that didn't take too long, right? That was not too hard, right? So that's the function 3 to the x minus 5 plus 8. 8 is the equation of the asymptote, so I have that there. Everything is approaching it. And then it blows up and goes crazy and grows really fast after x gets to be about uh, 5 or 6. Cool. No, I have no k transformation there. The next one, I have a k transformation. So let's take a look at the example g of x. g of x is equal to 5 multiplied by 2 raised to the power x over 3. So what's my um, parent function in all of this mess? Yeah, 2 to the x. 2 to the x is my parent function because 2 is my base, and I'm raising that to a transformed like exponent x. So let's make a table of values for 2 to the x. Start at 0. 2 to the 0 is? 1. one. 2 to the 1? 2. 2 to the 2? 4. 2 to the minus 1? 2 to the minus 2. Good. And now transform them. Here, take a look at my transformation values. Do I have an A transformation here? What's my A transformation here? 5. 5 is A. What's my K trans? What's my K value? Uh, here I'm dividing X by 3. So if I had x multiplied by something, that would be the same as dividing by 3. What would that something be? One third. One third. x times 1 third equals x over 3. So this is my k value, 1 third. k equals 1 third. No, just because I look for the number that I'm multiplying x by. And in this case, it's 1 third. And then to transform my y values... I just multiply my y values by a. To transform my k values, what do I do with k? Oh, you, you, you multiply by 3 because when that's a, when that's a, that is a division, when you divide, when you multiply, divide, you know. Yeah. When you, no, when you divide, you divide, because that's what k is. Normally here, we have x divide by k to find the new x coordinates. Because k is 1 third, Dividing by a third is the same thing as multiplying by three. Like if you have one pizza and you say, if you divide that into thirds, how many pieces will you have? Three pieces. That's pretty intuitive, right? And to me, dividing by a third is just that intuitive. I just flip it and multiply. And now we're just flip and multiply. So it's a, the three comes to the top, the one's at the bottom. And I'm 42 divided by one years old. So I don't need that one on the bottom. So it's just multiply by 3. You could have there x divide by 1 third and do that if you're a maniac. I think that's a lot of calculator punching, and it's a weird, it's like a hard thing to do in your head. Just multiply it by 3. It's the same thing. Caden. Okay. Um, so for your second example, the 1 fourth, 1 half, 1. Like yeah. Those are y values, yeah. That's the value of the function. We find 2 to the x, and then we plot it along the y-axis. Yeah, so that's our y's. So why don't we plot those two? Wait, because we still have to add that's our, This is our parent function. Let's transform that to get our uh, transform function. So first, let's do our x values, and we'll transform them by multiplying by 3. What's negative 2 times 3? Negative 6, negative 3, 0, 3, 6. There, I just transformed the whole column. So fast, you, you were here, you all saw it. One quarter multiplied by five, what's that? Five over four. Five over four, or you could call that 1.25. Both would be fine. This is useful for graphing purposes if you can't visualize five over four. And then one half times five? Five over two or 2.5, good. And then 1 times 5 is 5. I'll do the rest. 2 times 5 is 10. And 4 times 5 is 20. So just off the graph. There. There's, our, there's a table of values for our transform function. Plot it. Another useful piece of information we can get is where is the asymptote in that function? 
Well, it's uh, at zero because we we have a C value of zero there. So the asymptote is unchanged. It's the X axis. Okay. So let's go find our points and plot them. So we're going to start at minus six. So I go over here to minus six and then my value was 1.25. So let's do that. Minus six, 1.25 right there. And then we have uh, one uh, minus three, 2.5. So let's graph that. Minus three, 2.5. Okay. And then we have uh, zero, five. And then I don't need to scroll anymore. That's good. Zero, five, three, ten. And 620. Oh, man, my graph paper doesn't go all the way to 20. I guess I'm going to have to put that there. All right. And now we remember that the x-axis is the asymptote. So this is a much gentler curve, isn't it? And it comes down very gentle and is changing its slope a little slower than that other one. It's going to look something like that. Except mine's a little bumpy in places because I have chubby finger syndrome today. And... Uh, and so that is our new function. That's what that function will look like. And the zero? Yes, because we are we are adding zero to that, so the C value is plus zero. So the C value is, tells you the asymptote, but your default asymptote was also always zero anyway. Yeah. Sure now notice what that x divided by three did. It basically said it takes more time, three times as much time to get as much action. So it stretches, the, it, it expands the function horizontally. Wait, so we're just graphing those transform functions on top? Of yeah, just graph the transform functions. You could graph the parent function and then visually transform it. Yeah. But I think even if you're doing that and you want accuracy, you're still going to be working point by point. You know why I do the algebra section? No. Oh, thank God. Uh, not really. Like gra graphing is always going to be like either you go through point by point or you have some tricks. I might have tricks to graph these, but this would be how I would graph them. So now I am going to let you, oh no, there's algebraic work on this stuff, but what we've been doing is your exponent loss and applying your exponent loss is working algebraically with these. Now uh, I'll show you some of that with like this function. I'll simplify it a bit for you. Now here we have seven multiplied by one half three to the X plus six minus three. So I will help you get your AKC and D values and help you prepare these little mini formulas. But then it's up to you to graph it. So what's my A value here? Uh, half. half. No. What? Oh, no. A half is the parent function. No, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's uh, one half to the X. So this is the thing that's being subject to exponentiation. So that's our parent function is, uh, is one half raised to the power X. My A value is gonna multiply the whole thing out front. What's my A value? Seven is here, A. A equals seven. What's my K value? Three. K equals three. Good. What's my D value? Uh, it's like negative six. Yeah, I think of D as negative six. There it is there, because D is a sign flipper. So that means it's moving uh, six units to the left. And then C is the last one, process of elimination. C equals minus three. Good. And so now, put those things into these formulas here. Like, uh, you're going to transform your x values by x divided by k. So I'll have what here? x over 3 plus minus 6. Well, that was a weird way to write that. Why don't you just write minus 6? And that will be less chance of making an error. So x over k plus d is x over 3 minus 6, because d is negative 6. And then ay plus c. What's my ay plus c going to be, my little formula there? Uh, 7a plus uh, minus 3. 7y plus uh, minus 3. Yeah. 7y minus 3, yeah, it's good. No, it's good. So now try those to generate a uh, new function that you graph using transformations. And then we'll take it up by looking at it in Desmos in a few minutes.